In this lecture, we talk about the key, the, the most significant element of the diversification process, the diversification option when you're thinking about corporate strategy. And that is, where does value actually come from? Why do you benefit from moving into a different industry, a related industry, or an unrelated industry, and starting a new business, or launching a business, buying a business, whatever, when you're already successful in the business that you're in? You're essentially faced with two possibilities. One is invest in growing what you already have, or the second is invest some of that same, same, the same time, resources, capital, and the like into some new industry and branching out, diversifying, if you will. That's known as the value of diversification. Why would you do the diversification versus the expansion of your own business? It's really three elements to this to decide whether diversification, moving into another industry or another area, makes sense. One is what's called the industry attractive te test. We'll talk about that. Moving, is it, does it make sense? Is this really an attractive area to go? Another is the cost of entry test. Is it just too expensive to enter? And lastly, the better off test. Does it make sense? Are you better off in the end if you succeed than if you hadn't done it this way? Essentially, when you're in an industry and you're working really hard and you're very successful in an industry, you're building up your cash flow. The question is, do you take some of that cash flow and enter a new industry? You want to look for an industry that, of course, is growing, that you feel like you can compete in it. Um, this is, again, where you look at some of the industry analysis processes we or um, toolkit that we have, the five forces model, industry analysis, value chain analysis, all those things, to look at an industry and say to yourself, can we get in this industry and will it make sense? And if we're in it, are we likely to succeed? How's the competition? Is there substitute issues? Do the suppliers have a lot of strength? Do the buyers have a lot of strength? All of those kinds of issues as you look at the attractiveness of an, in of an industry. After you do that, you think to yourself, is, and you decide you still want to continue to potentially pursue a diversification into an industry, you think to yourself, how much will it cost me to get in here? Do I have to have a blitz of advertising? Is the industry really led with television advertising, for example, which is very expensive? Do I need to have a celebrity endorsement of some kind? Do I need to have a lot of assets? Do I have to build some equipment or factories or something to do this? What does it cost me to get in? If I'm going to buy a company, how much does it cost to buy the company to get in? So there's a cost of entry issue that, that sets essentially a, a baseline of how successful you have to be in order to earn back that cost of entry. So you factor that into the equation. And when you look at the attractiveness of the industry, that is how likely you are to grow into something successful and big, versus how much it costs for you to get into it, you can do an analysis and decide whether or not, in the end, you'll be better off by jumping in to the business rather than staying where you are and just investing in growing your, uh, your current business. That is, jumping into a new industry or growing your, into a core business. One of the key concepts in this whole idea of, of, of corporate strategy, which relates to the whole story of mergers and acquisitions, internal growth, starting your own company, joint ventures, strategic alliances, all of those things, relates to this notion that's called synergy, which simply means that the sum is more than the the sum is greater than the piece than the the total is worth more or greater than this just the pure sum, the mathematical sum of the parts. In other words, if I'm in one industry, for example, we were using an industry uh, we were using the example before being in the real in the residential real estate market, and you decide to move into the commercial real estate market, is there some reason for me to benefit to believe that I have certain resources and skills that mean if I'm successful there, then the business that's in commercial real estate, together with the business that's in, in, in um, residential real estate, when you add them together, there's more value there than if they were just two separate businesses. Because if there's two separate businesses, you can have individuals, management teams, or whatever, focusing their total 100% energy on each of those businesses. And they're likely to outcompete me. They're going to be thinking 100% of their time about commercial or residential. I'm going to be thinking 50% of my time about one and about the other. So I'm likely to have some, a, a real challenge there if I don't get synergy, which would make the two of them together greater than the sum of their parts. That's this notion of synergy. 
Why is that? How is that possible? Well, there's a number of reasons, and we'll talk more about this in, a, in future discussion as well, future lectures. But the bottom line is, if I can reuse some things, I have some extremely good construction people. I have some extremely good property spotting people that can do both residential and commercial. And they're not full operating at full capacity in residential. I have a marketing machine to, to send out um, marketing material to raise the prices or whatever. I have good contacts with local and state governments so I can get things done. So that when I have an opportunity in the marketplace, the fact that I have both of these businesses actually gives me an advantage over someone that only has one. Either because of my market connections or my market prowess or my uh, uh, complementary assets, like I said, advertising distribution, uh, skilled uh, people. Or I can have a lower cost because I have economies of scale or whatever, in which case the synergy would be that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That's the notion that's core to all of this. Eventually, you have to find some reason that it's better for you to own these two things together than someone else to own the individual one and spend all of their time trying to win against me. That's the notion of synergy. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later as well when we evaluate uh, evaluate the businesses in part two of this, um, uh, the second module of this section. OK? Next time, we'll talk about approaches to diversification, how you think about related versus unrelated diversification. This notion of synergy is core to all of that as well. But in the next lecture, we'll talk about how one goes about actually approaching this problem when you are in the corporate planning role and you're developing the corporate strategy. We'll see you then.